I'm Denise with Artist Heart Paint Party. You have to customize it. Make something that you like. Make it personal to you. However that is. Oh! <laughs> That's so cute! I love his little hat. You could be painting your bunny in. I just saw so this is a pretty spring bunny and I think that nice lighter, you know, softer colors look really nice for spring pastel. As big or as small as you want. Hey Nisi. Hey Rach. Can you slow down a little bit? Sure thing. Actually, I thought it was almost looking like a butterfly, but uh, I thought it would be cool and I had an apple today, so I saved the core. <laughs> That's a great. I wasn't sure if it would work or not, but I thought I'd give it a try. Yeah, I really like that you're reusing the material that may not seem to have a purpose and might have otherwise been thrown out. Right. Well, hi, you guys. I'm Denise with Artist and Her, and I am so excited to create some fun flamingos with you guys today with some of my favorite art supplies. You can use whatever it is that you want. I have sketch pads and canvas and my yard flamingos too, because this one, he needed a little touch up. He was getting a little rusty. So I have the perfect paint to fix him up. I'm gonna show you in a little bit. I do wanna start with canvas though. I would say the most popular common size for canvas is 11 by 14. So this is a stretched white canvas and I have it on my easel, which is really nice to get it off the table. I'm just gonna show you guys. So this is US Art Supply easel, look at that. I have about 200 of these because you know I do paint parties all the time. So it folds up super nice, metal, durable, opens up like that. You put your sketchbook or canvas on it and away you go to create. So let's do some uh, fun flamingos. Again, I have canvas. I love acrylic paint. That's like my go-to paint all the time. So I am going to sketch it out. I have um, my pencils here, lots of pencils. Can you tell teacher here? So these are the best pencils ever. They can sketch on anything and they don't break. You need to have strong pencils so you're not always at the pencil sharpener, right? In my nice clear caddy. It took me a long time to figure out I need clear so I know what's in every one of my caddies. But again, I'm going to sketch out my flamingo real quick. And the best part about acrylic paint is it can cover anything so I'm gonna start here I'll I'll press a little bit harder so you guys can see it I'm sure you can hear it can you see that now yeah and then I'm gonna sketch the flamingo's head right about there so this pencil is awesome for drawing or for writing anything because it's strong and durable you can uh, drop it on the floor and it won't break which is awesome so again, I'm just sketching out my flamingo a little bit. You can make it as big as you want. Give him his little beak there. All right, let's give him some legs. You can even make him silly and cute and give him shorts, right? Long legs. This one's going to go out a little and back. All right, and if you want, you can put a big tropical flower on there right around here. So that's my sketch, right? So again, it's up to you. A lot of times I don't even sketch it out. I just start painting. And I know a lot of people like to sketch and practice first. So there it is. I didn't even do details, right? The eyes, I can add that just with the paint. There you go. There's my, my sketched flamingo. All right. Now, you guys, the acrylic paint is non-toxic. The colors are beautiful. Today, I'm going to use Kali Art. So I have a set over here. There's 24 colors. They're beautiful. So you get a wide variety of color, plus you can make your own color. So you guys know if you use red and mix it with white, you're going to get pink. So I have my plates here. That's what I use as my palette or my little hefty plates. And I have some red on here. I also have the Kali Art. This is magenta, always white. You're gonna need white, probably some black. I don't ever put black on my plate until the end because then it ends up in all of my colors. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna start today with the background, okay? Real quick, I'm gonna do the background. I'm gonna mix some of the light blue and the white together, and I'm gonna get the sky in the background 
filled in. And again, I'm just going to paint right over my pencil lines. I'm not even going to worry about it. And there you go. If I want it lighter, I could just put a little bit more white in there and tone it down. And if I want it bluer, I can just add some more blue paint to it. It's that simple. I like to mix right on the canvas. So this is water soluble, no smell, non-toxic, very rich pigment, which means the colors are very bold. So you'll only need one coat of this, which is really why I like it. I really don't want to do more than one coat. It just takes longer. Some people like that. So acrylic paint comes in different consistencies heavy bodied, medium bodied, light bodied, and the light bodied, those would be your thinner ones, usually less expensive. Great too, but they will require a couple coats of paint. You usually can see through those. All right. Again, I'm not going to be too perfect here. This is fun art, you guys, not fine art, fun art, fun flamingo art. All right. Oops, I'm turning my, there, a little better. Okay, again, I just want to go maybe about that far for the sky, and then I'll go into the water. And you could maybe use the same blue with less white paint. What blue do I have here? I have, this is cerulean blue. Beautiful. Ah, love flamingos. Me too, you guys. So there you go. Cerulean blue and I mix some white with it. And again, when I go down to the water, I can just make the water bluer without the white. I didn't even wash off my brush. Did you see that? I just went right into the blue. I'm using horizontal brush strokes. It's a little crooked because I'm painting from the side. So what I could do is just go up a little bit higher. Try to straighten it out. There, not so crooked. There we go. And you could even put a little, I have this beautiful green here. This is called uh, Vir Viridian. And that would be really pretty in the water as well. Like it would look like the Caribbean. Is it Caribbean or Caribbean? I don't know. All I know is I'd like to go. You guys want to join me? I say Caribbean, Caribbean. I guess it depends on my mood. But you know how the water looks green? So again, if you want to put a little green in there, put a little green in there. This is a pretty blue. So acrylic paint is... This paint is opaque, which means not see-through. Very, very nice, rich consistency. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask them. I have been teaching art for whoo, over 20 years. I never thought I'd say that, but I'm saying it. I, I would say, and again, I love all different types of art supplies. Painting is my favorite. Watercolor paint is fun. It's just transparent and it, you can't really hide your mistakes like you can with acrylic. And I tend to make a lot of mistakes. So look at, I'm not even concerned about my lines because I can outline it later, but there's my background. You can always put a sunset in or a sun in the sky. This is just to give you the basics, right? All right, so there. Oh, wait, I didn't do, yeah, you can barely see that, but it's there. All right, so there's the background. I'm not, again, I'm, I'm working from the background to the foreground. So now I'm going to do my flamingo. So I have this really pretty magenta and I have white and red. And I'm just going to mix up some different colors for my flamingo.
And again, I just mix it. I put some white. I'm just going to mix it right on the canvas. See that? You can make it as pink or as light as you want. Now, if I get a little wet blue in there, I'm going to end up with a purple. That's okay. Again, it'll make it more interesting. So, so many times mistakes can become part of your artwork and no one knows. Oh, how did you make that really pretty purple? Oh, oh, it's a secret. No, it was a mistake. All right, so just think of basic shapes. Like we have a circle for the head here. I can overlap the paint right on top of the blue. You guys can paint the edge if you want to. You can go into it more later with some details. See how, look at it, there's that purple I just mixed together. I just wanted to see what would happen if I bumped into it because it's wet, right? I'm just gonna blend it in there. Like I only, you and I know, no one else, it's a secret. And then I'll do the legs. You can, again, add a little bit more white to make it lighter. I could add some white highlights in later. Have you ever seen a real flamingo? They live in the south, south of Florida, right? I would love to have one. They would not survive Cleveland, okay? But they sure are pretty. And they make you happy, right? And they make me happy. Okay, let's do the, we're going to do the beak here, pink too. All right, so there's our flamingo. What do you think? Again, details aren't there yet. You could add highlights. You could add more texture for feathers. Now I'm just going to go in real quick and just get this pretty tropical flower in here. And I'm just, again, I'm going to overlap it a little. You can put any kind of flower you want. You don't even have to put a flower. You can put another flamingo. Maybe you do baby flamingos. Oh, I have it up over here. Real quick, I'm going to see them. See the baby? Did you guys know that the babies don't have color? They're gray. The color comes from the... Don't quote me. I believe... Thank you, fabulous, you're so sweet. Um, the color comes from the, f the fish that they eat, I believe, okay? I'm not a science teacher, but I believe that's what I read. And if you know, let me know. <laughs> you can tell me. All right, there, there's my flower. All right, so again, I'm going to just add a little detail, right? Like I could add some white to it. I'm not, you guys, I haven't washed my brush off, but if you want to add highlights, you could just go into it and add some white highlights, right? Give it a little texture. I could go into my flower. See how just a little bit of white can make a difference, All right? You can do the center of your flower a little bit and even some little white lines in the water, like um, the caps on the water in the ocean. Okay, they look a little diagonal. They look like tadpoles, don't they? I'm gonna make them longer. You could put a little shark in there if you want. I'm not putting a shark. Okay, so I don't like those little white lines. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna blend them in. Bye-bye. I didn't like them. But again, you could do it. I think because I'm painting from the side, they look a little crooked. There, that looks better, doesn't it? All right. And then you add your detail. You can add a little eye. 
you can add an outline. So this is where you would cover any place where you went outside the line. You can outline your flower. And some people, you guys, I do in-person paint parties and some people don't have a steady hand and they are afraid to outline with black. So I always bring black markers and let them use the black marker to outline. If they feel like they have a, you know, not a steady hand, you can always wait for it to dry though. You never want to outline with a marker on top of what paint or you're just going to ruin your marker. And I'll use a permanent marker if I'm going to do that. And acrylic paint dries really quick. All right, so there you go. That's the basics. Oh, I should put a little grass in there. Hmm? A little beach grass. Actually, you guys, I forgot to paint the sand. <laughs> All right, that's okay. Well, you see the sand on the other one. Uh, these are just waiting in the water. I was talking too much and didn't pay attention. But let's just throw a little, let's throw a little seagrass in there. So I'm just going to use some vertical brush strokes and we can use the viridian or you can use, there's so many different greens in here. I just, I told you guys how pretty that one was. So let's use it just so you can see. So maybe I just do some real quick little vertical brush strokes for some tall grass. Right? And you can make it as tall as you want to. Maybe I have it go up through the tail. So that gives the illusion of some depth. What do you think? All right. So there, there is one example of a flamingo painting. Now, I love painting, but I also use a ton of other art supplies. So I'm going to set this one aside for right now. You want to try something different? How about color pencils? You don't want the mess. So here I have my sketchbook and I just put a big black thumbprint on my flower because my, I told you guys, I get black everywhere. So this is a mixed media book. That means you can use any supplies in this that you want to. You can use watercolor paint, acrylic paint, color pencil. Okay. Anything that you want to can be done in this book. So I have samples of markers, markers. We don't want to look at snowmen. Right? Oh boy, I got a lot of snowmen in here. How about a cute kitty cat? Markers. So again, it doesn't really matter. You can use any supplies that you want to. So this one is a color pencil. So I have a set here, really, really nice, especially um, if you're going on vacation. This is great to have. You can have it in the car. You can have it on the beach with you. It comes, it's got the little pencil sharpener in the lid. And look at all those fabulous colors, right? So again, you guys, even though I got a big black schmutz on this, same thing. You can do uh, sketch it out. You can use red. You can use whatever colors you want. They already do come sharpen and they color really nice and they are durable. So I'm pressing pretty hard. So when I color and shade, I like to color in the direction of whatever it is. So like this petal here. And you could sketch it out as well with color pencil if you want to. So this one that I'm using, this is a deli color pencil. This is like a red, orange. And you can also, let me switch colors. This is a deeper red, so you can blend them together. So if I'm going away on vacation and I want to still be creative, I can bring this with me and just kind of sketch and doodle and color without having to bring all my paints with me. So really, really nice product. Again, easy, stays nice, very durable so this thing doesn't fall apart. I hate when the box of whatever it comes in falls apart. So this is a durable, strong cardboard, holds all the color pencils, and then the clear lid has the sharpener in it. So 
very, very nice. Again, you can use regular paper. You guys can use the mixed media pad. You can use whatever you want with color pencils. Very, very nice. All right, so let me set that aside. Have you guys ever used black to create on? So again, one of my other fun favorite things is the same uh, maker, Canson, and it comes in black and it's falling apart, you guys. Sorry, <laughs> but it's really, really awesome. And I've used it a lot. This one's almost gone, so I got to get more. It has a perforated edge here so you can have a nice clean tear out. But I use acrylic paint on this one. Now look, and I'll do it again because I have a lot of acrylic still on my plate. It didn't go through to the back. You can see it um, has a little bit of buckling to it, but you can't tell on the side that you painted on, right? So it's really, really nice. And you can use regular acrylic paint. Let me find where I just put my paint. Give me a second. Anyway, you can use regular acrylic paint to do this. I set my plate down. Oh, there it is. Okay. All right. Back to my plate. You guys, I use these hefty plates to, uh, to hold my paint. So I'm just going to take a little bit of red. And again, you can layer it. So if you don't always want to have canvas, you can use the sketch pad. And again, when you're done, there's a nice clean edge. You can rip everything out or you can leave it in there. Pretty, right? I'm going to use some of that green since I didn't use a lot of it before. This is the Viridian. So I'm still, look at that. It almost looks like it's glowing. Isn't that cool? flamingos at night. How about that? So there's the black sketch pad. You can use acrylic nicely on there. Watercolor won't work on there. All right. That awesome. Here, I'll rip it out even though it's wet. But see, it's got like that perforated edge. It's wet though. I'm going to end up with green paint all over there. So no, I'm not going to rip it out. I'll do it later. Okay. You can also get black canvas, which is super fun, right? So if you don't want to do the pad, you can do the canvas. Just like I showed you guys before, you can use a black canvas and the acrylic paint is going to work just as well. Now, this time, you guys, I'm going to be daring and not even sketch it out. I'm just going to paint. All right. Are you ready? I'm just going to do the flamingo right on black. And if I mess up, I mess up. That's okay. So I'm not even going to do the blue. I'm just going to go right into the flamingo. All right. So let's start with the curve. See that? Look at, so that is covering acrylic paint. It went right over the black. It's the same Cali Art acrylic paint. So think of the a flamingo like a letter S, right? And if you guys rinse off your brush, make sure that you dry it off because you don't want to water it down unless you're looking for transparency. You can almost create the same type of watercolor effect if you water down acrylic paint, which again is fine, but it's going to be transparent. All right, let's give them a little round head. Now you can see where I didn't add enough paint where you see the black of the canvas there. So I'm just going to put more paint on it. And then give them some legs. And of course, you can still draw this out. It makes you feel better. Give them a little foot right here. Give them a little beak. You get the idea, right? So really, really fun to create on black for a little 
It looks like it's glowing. It's so fun. One day, I think I'm just going to do a whole class on creating on black paint. Really, really fun. So you get the idea. All right. So I want to move on. And actually, real quick, this is a black canvas, too, that I did for a fundraiser. And it has a bunch of different words. So it's a um, you can do paint words or whatever it is that you want on black. All right. So now I'm going to move on to something else. You ready? So you guys, we did the black sketchbook, the black canvas, the white canvas, the white drawing book. Now I want to talk about some flamingos I have on my deck. <laughs> so actually, I'm going to let's just set this down for a minute. All right. I can't put the flamingo up here, but this is on my deck and I've had it for several years. It's getting a little bit rusty. So what I did and am in the process of doing is using the multi-surface paint. So multi, it's different than the Kali art. This is folk art and this is multi-surface, which means you can use it on any surface you want. I actually have a whole container of these. Because again, I do paint parties with these. All right, so I'm going to move, let's see. Let's move this one. All right, you guys. So multi-service, you can paint on metal, you can paint on glass, you can paint on wood. This is a wine glass. It's empty. I'm sad. <laughs> Let me put a paper towel in this so you can actually see the flamingo. All right, so I'm going to put this in here so you can see it better. But there's my flamingo on there, and I used the multi-surface paint. Can you see that? And I painted the bottom, too. So you just paint the bottom, and then you can see it through. So there's my flamingo glass. Again, multi-surface, same thing. It's really rich body, very, very nice. And it adheres. So I would say two weeks, you want to let it set for two weeks and then you can wash it. Okay. But at, it, it takes about two weeks and don't paint too close to the edge of your wine glass. We do these a lot. And I wanted to show you, I started my flamingo. So my flamingo is metal and it's outdoors, right? So I definitely need something that's more durable. It can't be plain acrylic. It has to be something that's multi-surface so it can stand the weather. So all I did was take some of the multi-surface. Let's find something. That's a, um, let's take a little bit of, of course I don't have my pink here. Hold on, let me find my pink. All right, so we're going to take a little bit of pink, and you can, again, add a little bit of white to it, and you can just paint right on here, right on the middle, and it dries almost immediately. I'm going to get a bigger brush. You guys can really use any brush when you're using this. So I don't know if you could tell it's gotten rusty. So look, now you can see it better. Okay, so again, I am touching up. So if you have, I also have a sculpture out that's um, painted. It's a painted sculpture, but it's worn out. And I'm going to go out there after this and paint that as well. So this is multi-surface, good on anything. And you can also get it in a variety of colors. I have a bucket of it here somewhere. Um, so I can show you guys that I have every single color that they make. And you can also use Sharpie markers. So Sharpie also makes uh, oil-based markers. So they look like this. So again, when sometimes people want a little bit more details on something that they're doing, I have a ton. These are oil-based Sharpie markers. So I wouldn't use them with little children. Um, I would use them with adults, maybe older teenagers as well because they're oil based and they are permanent. So these will dry right away and they are permanent right away. They don't take two weeks to set like the paint does. So this is another great product. Again, maybe if you want to write something on there instead of hand painting it, you can always use the Sharpie marker to write it out. All right. Now, what else did I want to show you guys? I have so many things here I wanted to show you. This is another type of marker. These are called paint pens. So you guys can use these on a variety of surfaces as well. And 
use them as regular markers. So these are a little bit finer of a tip. And the colors are really, really fun as well. Oh, I have a... Oh, I wanted to show you guys. I'm trying to be organized. For those of you that know me, I, I, it's a little bit more challenging for me to be organized. But I'm doing my best. So I have another sketchbook here. And this one's specifically made for watercolor paint. So what's the difference between a regular sketchbook that's mixed media and watercolor? Well, watercolor paint, you have more water. So just like I showed you guys before with the sketch pad where it got a little bit buckly, the more water you add, the more it's going to get a little bit, buck, you know, a buckle a little bit. This pad is thicker. So this is also good for markers, multi-surface markers, watercolor paint. It's heavy duty. It's thicker. Oops. And there's another smudge because that's what I do. I smudge stuff. So here, again, you can use your markers in the sketchbook or you can use paint. Now I showed you guys before, if you want you can um now i'm just going to make that little smudge into part of my artwork that's what i do okay and i tell people that all the time when they have they make a little mistake a happy little accident we just make it part of the artwork so i'm going to you can use watercolor paint but what i'm going to do since i have all this acrylic paint if you water down your acrylic paint you're going to get the consistency of watercolor so all i'm going to do is take a little bit of water here and just puddle it up on my plate. So I'm just watering down my watercolor paint, my actually my acrylic paint, and I'm gonna show you guys how nice this works on this pad. See that? So it's more transparent. And this sketchbook is made specifically for watercolor paint. Again, because it's thicker, the paper is thicker, so it won't buckle. Flamingos are just so fun. I could paint flamingos all day long. Can you tell? Now, what would I do with that big pink smudge down there? How am I going to fix that? Well, I can make it part of the leg. I could cover it with grass. Right? So many different things I'm thinking about what I could do. I could put a beach sign there. Uh, what could it say? Um, beach this way. Or South Florida or bust or something like that. I don't know. Be funny. I like to be funny, right? Let's give them some legs. You can add another little flamingo in there if you want. But again, you can see the difference when you water it down. The, the appearance of it is very different than the opaque art, uh, painting right? So you can use acrylic paint and water it down. And now let's see how I'm going to cover that. I'm just going to do this. How about that? And no one will know but you and me. And change it however you want. And again, you can put a sun in the background if you want to. You can give them a friend. Should I give them a little friend? We'll do it. We'll do a portrait. They're posing for us. How about that? And you just adjust as you go, right?
Uh, what do you think? Does it look like they're flirting? Are they a little flirty? And again, the grass could go all the way across. And if you want, I could even do a little like you, 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 you for feathers. Kind of like my little sculpture here, right? You can just get inspired by things that you find around your house when you're creating. I could do the same thing on this guy. I'm going to put a little green grass across the bottom on this one. And then give them a little detail. You guys can always turn to the handle of your paintbrush and just use the handle for the eye, or you can paint it in. Let's make that one a little bit bigger. And again, if you want to outline, you can outline. You can use a marker if you feel better about using a marker. Can you tell I have fun doing this? Just a little bit of fun. Just to relax, not be too serious about it, right? This is fun art, not fine art. What do you think? You think they're good? So again, I just wanna show you guys, and it's gotta dry, right? But it's really durable and thick. Can you see how thick that is? So it's really, really nice. And you can also, just rip it right out like that and then hang it on your refrigerator or put it in a frame or give it to your Amazon driver. I love to give my artwork away. So people really appreciate it. It's really, really fun. You can make it into a card. It can be a Father's Day card, right? Just think outside the box. Keep creating. Let me see if there's anything else. You guys, these are really, really nice, especially I'll do a whole nother one on back to school. They come in a set of three. But again, it took me a really long time to get rid of colored containers because I could never find anything. So this makes it so much easier when I have them in transparent containers so I can see where all my stuff is. And it doesn't have to be pencils, but they're a perfect size for pencils. You can put colored pencils in there. You can put stickers, markers, uh, colored markers. So again, love these. Nice length, and they have an easy open and close box. So you guys can, they, it comes with stickers too. I didn't put them on there, but they come with all these little stick, stickers you can decorate your box with as well. So I don't want to, I like to see through mine. So I didn't want to put stickers on there. Super nice. Let's see, I want to talk about one more thing before we go, okay? So let's see, let me go back to my sketch pad. All right, my sketch pad. Let's see if I have any pages left. Eh, I got my little sloth here. Here's my skateboarding sloth I did. So here's my little skateboarding sloth. You probably can't see it, but I'm going to, I'll go over it a little bit real quick. Can you guys see him? So what I want to show you are these erasers that I use. So I have... Also, these other transparent containers. All my art supplies in, right? I'm really trying to get organized, you guys. These erasers are so nice because they're white, okay? So they don't leave pink marks. So I was just sketching out my little skateboarding sloth here. Just so you guys can see. And then you, you can use this eraser. It's really, really nice if you would do a, light, a lot of drawing. And it doesn't leave any marks. On your paper so 
again, sometimes if you use the pink eraser, you're going to get little pink lines. So it really just depends on what you like. But a lot, a lot of times too, if I'm shading, I get fingerprints all over. And this helps alleviate all those little marks and it's white. Gotta love it. So that's also nice. I started talking to you guys about these paint pens. I'm going to finish with the paint pens. How's that? All right. So these are really nice. These are water-based. These are great for all ages. Okay. So these are not oil-based. These are multi-surface paint markers. They're uh, all extra fine tip. Okay. And let's take out this beautiful pink one because we're really doing flamingos today. And I'm just going to show you guys if you want you can use this on a glass surface. Again, it's, on, it's for any surface that you want. So markers are good on this for details. Can you see that? You could do little polka dots. You could put little hearts on there. You can write someone's name. You could put the year. These are good for weddings. But So, so this is a multi-surface marker. Of course, you can use it on paper, right? You can color with it, but it's made for any surface. So if I wanted to touch up my flamingo, I could put it on my flamingo. I can do it on my glass that's empty. Is your glass half empty or half full? You can, again, write words on this. Maybe I could put, you know, Denise's flamingo hands off or something like that. No, I wouldn't do that. But, again, you can touch up things with this. And they're really, really nice. And the colors are beautiful. Washable. Come Look at all the bright, fun colors. Very, very fun. Love this a lot. If you guys want to finish up your artwork with a little bit of bling, I got a little bit of bling here, my Maj Paj. This one has the glitter in it. You can see I've added it to my flamingo. Can you guys see that? So I put it on there. So it's a sealer and it's glossy and it's sparkly. So it has some glitter in it. So you can add it again to a variety of things for a little bit of bling. It does have a little smell to it. It's glue. So it's white, but it dries shiny and clear. Okay, it is water-based, but I'm going to show you. It looks a little bit white, but it will dry transparent and clear. Beautiful sparkle. Beautiful, beautiful. Love it. It looks really cool on black, too. And the other one is the Mod Podge mat. So if you get this one, this is a sealer as well, but it doesn't dry shiny. It dries flat. So there's no shine and there's no sparkle in this one. Let's go for sparkle. I only use this kind of glitter, which is Sparkle Maj Podge. Love it. So you guys, I hope you learned a thing or two. I hope I was able to inspire you so you can get creative. Don't forget to wash out your brushes. Just get a kind of cup. And again, everything that I use is non-toxic and water-based, except for the Sharpie oil-based markers. And then just wash everything out with a gentle soap, hand soap. You can use a dish soap and water. And then always, you guys, don't leave your brushes in water like this because then the bristles will dry crooked. Um, I do have these brushes here. I use these when I'm working slower. So these are smaller brushes. They're really nice. Excellent reviews. Okay, you get a lot of them, but they're small. If you notice today, I was using larger brushes. These are really great for like wine glass painting or if I'm doing a smaller painting. I use the bigger ones today because I can get done quicker. Okay. Let's see. I'll just show you because they paint very nice and they're really not expensive. So let's do, let's do my little sloths baseball cap. Can you see that? Really nice paint brushes, but again, they're just small. They're short handle, easy to use, great for all ages. I would say if you're a professional painter, you probably want to go with a little bit more expensive 
uh, paintbrush. These are great for beginners, intermediate. Again, I use them, but I use them when I'm painting smaller things. They work really, really nice. And again, you can use it for detailing. Look at the sizes, okay? So you have, with the pointy ones, those are called round, and then this is called a flat. It's on the floor now. <laughs> but these are great for smaller art projects and for detailing your pictures. Love these as well. But again, they're nice and durable. Don't leave your brushes in water. Wash them out. Again, I'd leave them in there for a couple hours, but then you got to wash them out or they're just going to fall apart, right? So those are all of my art supply tips for you guys today. I'm sure, oh, you know what? I have one more thing. How many times have I said I have one more thing? I keep looking down and I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot that. I, I have this new set I just got. Okay, so look at this. It's going to look brand new because it is brand new. I love getting stuff just like you guys, all right? So this is an art kit. This is so awesome. If you're in art or you want to get someone a gift, it could be a gift for Father's Day, for kids. This is a really nice set. I would definitely say no younger than teenage years because you have some um, advanced things in here. You have these beautiful color pencils. Okay. You have all these different uh, leads of pencils because they're going to be softer than others. Charcoal, which is beautiful for shading, but it's messy, right? So you have charcoal pencils, you have a blending pencil, you have an eraser, you have chalk pastels, you have all these beautiful color pencils and you have a paint, uh, one small paintbrush in here that you can use. And this is a blending stick as well. And there's a sharpener down here, you guys. There's a little sharpener in here. And then guess what? You close it and it zips up and you take it on your road trip. You take it to the beach. You take it wherever you want to go. So if you have someone in your family or yourself who really, really likes to draw and you want to take stuff with you, this is it. It's so really, really nice. I would say... 16 and older. I would not go younger than that because it's pretty advanced. All right. It has to be someone that's really going to enjoy creating, but what a nice gift. So I really like this one as well. You get them a drawing pad and away you go. Nothing better than just kind of sitting on your deck on a beautiful night and sketching on a road trip, on a vacation, on an airplane when you get bored and antsy. So I like to pack up a little bit of art supplies so I can stay creative and just kind of take my mind off of whatever it is. All right. I told you that was it. That was my last product I'm going to talk about. Until next time, you guys, I'm Janice with Artists at Heart. Thank you for creating or watching with me, and I hope I inspire you and you guys go make something now. All right. I'll see you later.